Howdy, it's Kyle with another installment of Oddities of Geography and Interesting Facts. This is part four in the series, and I will leave links to the other three in the description, one of which will be up here. And the whole point of this series is to take a look at interesting facts and quirks and oddities about geography that might not be very well known. So let's take a look at interesting facts about geography, part four. I want to start by talking about cities that have an out-of-place skyscraper. I'll start off with the city of McAllen, Texas, which sits right along the Rio Grande and the Mexican border. The population of the city is about 142,000 people, and based on the topography and the fact that the population density is pretty low, there isn't much need for any high-rises there. However, there is one that really stands out. Another city with an incongruous skyscraper is Oklahoma City. It's a fairly large city with about 681,000 people in the city and about 1.5 million in the metro area. So there is a decent skyline downtown with some nice buildings, but one really sticks out. At 844 feet, it's 344 feet taller than the second tallest building in the city, or 105 meters taller. That's quite a big difference between the tallest and second tallest building in the city, and it really makes the Devon Tower stand out. But you can't talk about out-of-place buildings without talking about the worst offender, the Ryogyeon Hotel in Pyongyang, North Korea. It's nicknamed the Hotel of Doom, and it's the largest building in the world that is abandoned. This building is 105 stories tall, 1,080 feet or 330 meters. It's been under construction for 35 years and still hasn't opened up. It's supposedly going to be a combination of a luxury hotel, condos, and office space. However, I wouldn't hold my breath. Next, I want to go back to Oklahoma, this time to Tulsa and the campus of Oral Roberts University. This is a private Christian university that has some pretty interesting architecture on campus, including a fairly tall skyscraper, which looks even more out of place because the campus is several miles from downtown. Although the tower was originally created as a faith healing hospital, it didn't succeed in that and it's since been turned into office space. But even though that one big skyscraper stands out, there's some really strange architecture in some of the smaller buildings on the campus. Next, I want to talk about the distribution of the highest elevations in the U.S. The tallest peak in the U.S. is Denali in Alaska, which stands at 20,310 feet. And each of the top 10 highest peaks in the U.S. are in Alaska. And in fact, it has six peaks over 16,000 feet. There are also 14 over 14,000, 10 over 13,000, 19 over 12,000, and 11 over 11,000. Now look at Colorado. The highest peak is Mount Elbert, which stands at only 14,440 feet. However, Colorado has 25 peaks over 14,000, 33 over 13,000, 29 over 12,000, and 22 over 11,000. So Alaska has the highest peaks in the U.S. by wide margin, but there really aren't a large number of those high peaks. And then once you get below 15,000 feet, then Colorado really takes over as the state with the most high peaks. And as a side note, these are two of my favorite state flags in the country. But I'm going to use Colorado and its elevations as a segue into this next interesting fact. The lowest elevation in Colorado is 3,317 feet, or just over 1,000 meters. And this is in the high plains of eastern Colorado along the Kansas border. When most people think of Colorado, they're going to think of the mountains, but the eastern third of the state is high plains. But even though the terrain is relatively flat, the elevations are fairly high. Now take a look at this map. The states highlighted in purple have a highest point that is lower than the lowest point in Colorado. There are 18 of these states, and most of them are in the Midwest or along the Gulf Coast. So Colorado has the largest number of peaks over 10,000 feet, and it also has the highest flat spot. And I can just barely hear John Denver singing in the background, Rocky Mountain High, Colorado. Next, I want to talk about the longest known cave systems in the world. The longest cave in the world is Mammoth Cave in Kentucky, which is part of Mammoth Cave National Park. There are approximately 420 miles or 676 kilometers of passage in this cave. And it's not just one long passage, it's an interconnected web of passages that adds up to 420 miles. And the U.S. is home to five of the ten longest caves in the world. The third longest cave in the world is Jewel Cave in South Dakota, 
with 209 miles or 336 kilometers of passage. Just down the road from Jewel Cave in South Dakota is Wind Cave, the seventh longest cave in the world. It's known to have 162 miles or 260 kilometers of passage, and both Jewel Cave and Wind Cave are protected areas under the National Park Service. The eighth longest cave in the world is Lechaguilla Cave in New Mexico. This is located very near Carlsbad Caverns and is in Carlsbad Caverns National Park. It's known to have about 151 miles or 242 kilometers of passage, and even though it's located in a national park, access to it is very restricted. You have to be part of a scientific expedition or be legitimate cave explorers to be granted access, and even then you might not get it. And the fifth of the top 10 caves in the world that are in the U.S. is Fisher Ridge Cave in Kentucky, which is the 10th longest cave in the world. It's known to have 132 miles or 212 kilometers of passage. The second and fourth longest caves in the world are both located in the Mexican state of Quintana Roo, which is where Tulum and Cancun are. So with that, six of the 10 longest caves in the world are in either the U.S. or Mexico. However, big asterisk on this because there's undoubtedly a lot of cave passage unexplored, especially in Asia. So there's a decent chance there are other caves in the world that would be on this list, although it's very unlikely any of them are longer than Mammoth. The next interesting fact is about the Indian state of Uttar Pradesh. There are over 241 million people in just this one state, which makes it the most populous subnational jurisdiction in the world. So whether state, province, or territory, this is the most populous one. And there are only four countries in the world with a larger population, China, the US, Indonesia, and India itself. And it really isn't that large. It's about the size of the US state of Oregon or the UK. To put it in perspective, the UK has about 67 million and Oregon just over 4 million. So I've overlaid Oregon and the UK in the part of the country where Uttar Pradesh is. Imagine 241 million, a quarter billion people in your state. A lot of people look for solitude, but if you're looking for the exact opposite, check out Lucknow, the capital of Uttar Pradesh. So now we'll go from the most populous state on Earth to a very lightly populated part of the U.S. Montana and South Dakota share a border, and why it's unique is because it's the only border in the country where the only direct state-to-state -state route on a road is a dirt road. I have to zoom in three levels on this map before this road even shows up. And this dirt road connects Carter County, Montana with about 1,400 people, to Harding County, South Dakota with about 1,300 people. The town right near the state line is called Camp Crook with about 65 people. So not many folks living in this area, not much need for a big paved highway to connect these two states. Next, I wanna talk about the concept of a city state. And it is exactly what it says, a country that is basically just one city. The three that people think of most when they think of city-states are Singapore, Monaco, and Vatican City. However, I want you to mention another one in this category, Kuwait. And the reason why Kuwait is often left off this list of city-states is because it really isn't that small. It's about the size of the U.S. state of New Jersey or the European country Slovenia. So I've overlaid New Jersey in peach and Slovenia in light blue. And that small yellow area in Kuwait would be Singapore. The country of Kuwait has about 4.7 million people, but almost all of them live in the capital Kuwait City or its suburbs. So as you can see, only three small towns in this country outside of the main metro. And most of that empty space is just open desert. So even though the area of Kuwait is much larger than its urban area, it still effectively is a city-state. Next, I want to talk about the Bay of Fundy, which is a bay between the Canadian provinces of New Brunswick and Nova Scotia, and the western end of the bay hits the eastern point of the U.S. state of Maine. And the reason why this place is odd is that it has the highest range of tides on Earth. Average tidal range on the planet is about 3 feet or 1 meter, but the Bay of Fundy is 52 feet or 16 meters in terms of its tidal range. So that's a huge difference between high and low tide, which leaves a really interesting situation for docking boats. And perhaps the most staggering fact about the Bay of Fundy is that over a 12-hour tide cycle, more water flows in and out of the bay 
than twice the combined water flow of every river in the world over that same 12 hour period. So with the combination of that big tidal flow and the seafloor geology or bathymetry leads to whirlpools, and the largest whirlpool in the Western Hemisphere is in the Bay of Fundy, it's called the Old Sow Whirlpool. Now wouldn't you like to try to swim through this bad boy? And because much of the Bay of Fundy goes right up to the coast of Nova Scotia, that means there can only be one person responsible for this huge range of tides. My girl, Sarah McLaughlin. Sarah and I have a complicated history, but we all know how she really feels about me. So that was part four of Oddities of Geography and Interesting Facts. I post videos in this series about quarterly, so look for one about three months or so following the date of this one being posted. But I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up to let me know you approve and subscribe to this channel if you're interested in learning more about geography. I'm doing oddities like this, doing interesting maps analysis, talking about cross-country road tripping, comparing cities and counties to states. So everything I do comes from a little more nerdy type perspective. But yeah, thanks for watching. Geography King, signing out.